free of diseases compared to potato, mostly. This is tiger nuts. It's a grass-like plant that gives also small roots, like potato-like, but very small and very tasty. This is a winged bean. It's called like the supermarket bean. You can eat everything from the bean, from the roots to the leaves to the pods and the seeds. So it's just starting to grow now because we are in the beginning of the growing season. This is a Thai ginger or also called a galangal. Very nice smell. Here is a tray to transplant outside with broccoli plants. I just saw them in a little bit of compost, sand and uh, peat soil. Here is just a dye plant. We also grow dyes to use in our art workshops. This is an indigo root plant. It's a, a very rare type of blue dye in the roots, I guess, of the plant. So it's just seedling. And here it's, a, it's it will come later on the season. There's going to become ground nuts, which I can show an example. It's an edible root. It's an edible root. Some of them that can grow very big to the size of tomato of uh, of potato. And it's just used like a potato, but the, the advantage is it tolerates very cold climates and it's a wild plant. And it's richer in protein than a potato. So it's a very good source of food. And it's a climbing plant. There is some hammerant here coming. Some small pomegranate trees. They are still dormant from the season. Some peas and cow peas. This is mille. An alternative to corn, and mille is a very easy to cook and eat type of food, and very drought resistant and very like uh, easy to grow. Compared to corn, it doesn't need that much fertilizer or water. So, but it's a it's a warm climate kind of. Uh, and here is a Canopodium polycal. It's a kind of quinoa, like plant that will come from here. We are also growing quinoa, by the way, an amaranth. And Canipolium podical, it's a, uh, a type of pseudo grain like quinoa, but has no saponin, so it doesn't need to be washed. A rarity from Peru. Here, it's funny to show you this because it's almost extremely tiny. It's just a asparagus plant coming. So I will have to wait two or three years to have asparagus. But it's an excellent plant for Iceland. It stands very well in cold climates. Here is neem, tropical plant from India. Obviously not a choice for Iceland, but I'm growing inside. Neem is a powerful insecticide, so it's a perfect thing to spray as an organic source of uh, pesticide, kind of. I don't like the word pesticide, but you can control pests, insects, by spraying the plants with this. It doesn't kill them. Some of them it kills, but most of them they will repel by the smell of neem. Also has medicinal uses the plant. And here is some oka seedlings coming. I really like to eat oka. It's a very mush, mushy, mucilaginous kind of food using African type of cuisine. Here is a Siberian tomato. Supposedly this tomato can tolerate uh, frost and can crop and they're really low temperatures, so a perfect option for Iceland. And this type of pepper, chili pepper, actually is a very, it's another type of pepper, it doesn't have exactly the same leaves as a pepper plant, it's much more soft. This is Rokoto pepper. Rokoto pepper, it comes from Peru, from the high mountains, and it kind of tolerates snow and frost, and can grow for five, six years and can grow into a size of a tree and make a lot of chili. Can you imagine a chili-like plant but in the form of a tree? Very fancy stuff. This is Lufa. Very nice crop to grow. Here is some trays with salad. There is a corn salad and uh, some... Um, I forgot the name in English the pers parsley-like uh, cerefolium, I think. And that's rucola, rocket, but it's not very 
good shape because it's not so much sunlight at this time of the year. We can finish here. Yeah, uh, I'm almost finishing. And here we have uh, some mix of uh, spring onions and also some of them are walking onions which means they are perennial type of onions. And there are also some leeks. I just uh, sound a lot of more trays. And here is uh, I sound some rye to grow it outside because I forgot to sow it in the autumn. This is jicama or Mexican turnip, an edible crop root which uh, has the one of the records, highest records in the uh, towns per yield, towns per hectare of yields of uh, edible food. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of other things like a passion fruit growing here. I have a bigger one in the greenhouses down there. This is a very tiny plant. I have another one that is like already two meters high. And uh, this is some mes chilling mes mesquite. It's another source of perennial kind of bean like tree. Very strong, dry, resistant, and cold tolerant as well. This is a date palm grown from seeds. I also had a banana and an anset, but they died. That's teff, a cereal that is extremely drought tolerant. It grows on the desert. It's just like rye. This is hawker, very nice seedlings coming, very fancy plant, Lo looks like a red clover. This is a Siberian apple, just a seedling from last year, extremely cold resistant plant. Then I have some uh, silverberry and I have also Eliagnus and Aronia. And this is pigeon peas, just uh, to finish. Pigeon peas is another edible kind of bean and a kind of pulse from the tropics. And this is a moringa tree, but it's now dormant. And this is some tiger nuts here, very beautiful. Some runner beans coming. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much. Uh, I have an. Uh, yeah, here we have a princess tree. It's a tree that grows in cold climates. Actually, it's a little bit burned by the frost, but. It's supposed to be dormant in some of the year, but it's now indoors. Princess tree produces a lot of biomass, so it's a very nice tree to use as a mulching and to attract wildlife. Silverberry here, mulberry tree, both of them, but this one has the leaves. Very nice way, uh, you can eat the leaves, they are very rich in protein, or the berries. Very tasty berries. And this is a honey locust. It's now dormant, because I put it outside. And I have a, a small seedling here. Honey locust is another kind of like bean-like plant that produces a lot of bean-like fruits. But it's a tree so, and can stand a lot of cold also and dry weather conditions or bad soil. And fixes nitrogen into the soil. And uh, yeah, this is all to begin with. You can just show the green, the cold frame again outside. Outside we are growing a lot of salads broad beans, peas and spring onions inside the cold frame. The cold frame has also a layer of plastic underneath the soil and peat moss and this can uh, protect a lot from the cold. When the temperature is minus 10 or minus 15 Celsius outside it's still above freezing inside. Just simple plastic with no heating. And this is all. Maybe I'm going to post an update later on. Just maybe you can I'm going to, uh, I'm not very good at doing videos, but I hope to uh, post more in the future. I'm just going to start now, just last second, I'm going to start more peas and uh, broad beans just to plant. Uh, I just start them inside for a week and then I transplant it outside. And I hope next month I can have some fruits. So, just subscribe and keep waiting for the next videos. Thanks.